ADHD is known to affect around 25 million people here in America. That's quite a bit of people. So according to Tom Hartman, he proposed a theory about ADHD stemming from hunter and gatherers from back in the day. So what does that mean? And why was that something that occurred? If we look at a lot of disorders that exist today, at one point in the evolution of mankind, they served a purpose. We didn't always have the help and tools that we have today. Back in the day, the body basically, through natural selection, basically adopted these um, defense mechanisms. Just like animals did. Only the strong, the fastest, the smartest survived. So, with Tom Hartman's theory, he discusses the idea of hunter and gatherers. Tom Hartman had a son who had ADHD. I believe his son had the hyperactive type. So Tom Hartman's son had the traits of someone with the condition. And Tom Hartman basically did some research, you know, and basically came upon with the information that he has now, which is this theory, the hunter and gatherer theory. So with this hunter and gatherer theory, we're able to look back at our ancestors. So any place that had lush green, you know, leafy lands and had a lot of animal and low population, that's the area where people with the condition thrived. Because we hunted and we gathered, gathered our necessities, we fought off any enemies or any animals or whatever it may, may be that was a threat. So, that was the way of life for quite a while. Unfortunately, that came to change and that wasn't always the way things were. What happened? Well, what happened was that in Asia, people started farming. And people started using agricultural techniques to live life in a much different way because they didn't need to hunt and gather like the way we did. They had a whole different means and that's what worked for them. Unfortunately though, since people with the condition with ADHD, we were used to, our bodies were prepared for one lifestyle, for one way of life, which was the hunting and gathering. And some of you might be wondering, well, how come it hasn't disappeared yet? Why do certain people still have this condition? Well, certain people still have this condition because it, it wasn't that long ago that we were doing some of these practices. If we look at certain cultures you know, from around the world, some of these cultures, they stopped hunting and gathering not too long ago. And if you understand the way human evolution works, it takes sometimes centuries, sometimes more, sometimes less, for certain traits or certain conditions and things to disappear over time. So people with the condition, basically, we still have that hunter and gatherer mentality and traits in terms of our brain according to Tom Hartman's theory, which I agree with, because I mean, you have to. But what that basically means is that people with the condition, we're living in a world that is not meant for us. We're living in the farmer's world, which is not suited for us. So by doing just that, by living in a world that's not meant for us, that can cause us quite a bit of problems. For example, we were discussing in a class that I had, who, what culture has the biggest rate of alcoholism in the United States? And we discovered that Native Americans have the biggest rate of alcoholism. Now, I thought to myself, why is it that Native Americans have the highest rate of alcoholism? Well, if you look back in history, even recently, going back to the, the last century, the 20th century, 
Native Americans were basically brought into our society. They were brought from their hunter and gatherer ways of life and were forced, in a sense, to live amongst the society that we have now. So, them, just like us, people with the condition, they need something just like people with the condition do to be able to bring their reward system up just to be able to keep up with what the neurotypicals are doing with how they're living. And what's the easiest way for our reward system to go up that's legal after being 21 or at 21? Alcohol. So what happens is that when individ certain individuals, not all of them, certain individuals I know who are inattentive type, when they drink alcohol, they have a better sense of concentration. Their speech becomes more clear. Their central, central nervous system slows down. And they're able to cope better with certain things at that moment that the buzz is, so to speak, you know, is getting them. But unfortunately, as with most drugs, you know, you keep intaking it and your tolerance is going to build. So, if you're self-medicating by using alcohol to boost up your lack of reward system, eventually your body's going to become dependent on it. It's also going to mess with your brain cells and it's going to bring a lot of ir irritability as well as a lot of other problems. So, I would say that Native Americans are the last culture to be, to be brought into this modern society that we have, so they're almost being, were almost being forced to adapt, well, I say were, but a lot of them still are, there's still reservations out there. So, then we look at other cultures who were quote-unquote civilized at later dates. I look at the Hispanic culture, and I see that a lot of people in the Hispanic culture have the condition as well, which is why there's such a huge alcohol problem, and such a huge problem with coke as well, especially coke. I've spoken to a lot of uh, older Hispanics from the older generations, and they have told me that coke has been a big issue. Now, why is coke such a big issue? Well, it highly brings up your reward system a little too much. So basically, some of them use it, in a sense, to self-medicate, but as we know, coke is very habit-forming, and your body basically becomes dependent on it rather quick, rather quick. So, I look at other cultures as well, and I see, this isn't by any means generalizing. I am only speaking of my territorial, <laughs> I guess I should say, the cities of, you know, that are, are around where I live. And I notice that certain cultures of people have the condition more than others. And it is because of a survival, you know, uh, self-defense system that our body had, our ancestors' bodies had, their brains had. And trying to live in this time that we're living now is very difficult for us because it is a time that is not meant for us, which is why we get upset if we don't eat properly. Because we basically, just like a hunter or gatherer back then, if we didn't eat properly, you were going to die. If you didn't have that sense of concentration and hyper focus to kill an animal, or to kill off a threat that came to you from another tribe, for example. Let's say you and your tribe, your small tribe and your family are about to go to bed and you hear some rumbling in the bushes. You're not going to say, oh, hey, we'll just get it later. No. You have to go and kill off that threat and find out what that was at that moment. Otherwise, you might become the prey to another animal or to another tribe with survival of the fittest. That same intensity and lack of empathy was heavily needed in order to annihilate the threatening animal or the opposing tribe or whatever threat it may have been. We didn't need to pay car insurance, we didn't need to pay phone bills, check social media, 
go to school, have a job, go on dates, whatever it was. No. People with the condition of the hunter-gatherers of that time, we needed to focus on just one thing, and that was our mere survival. Let me re reiterate that. We needed to focus on just making sure that we were going to be able to live to the next day. Not all these other things like going to a going to an after party from the, from the job with the rest of our colleagues and making sure we do this or making sure that we try this dish at a restaurant or whatever it may be no we needed to make sure that nothing was going to kill us we basically had enough to eat and that any opposing threat was eliminated that's where the intensity comes from the lack of empathy comes from the need to get adequate sleep and the need to to have a good amount to eat and also that nutrition what we ate was good because back then there was no artificial fill in the blankets no what you killed it was straight from the animal so that might be general generalizing a little bit but that's how the idea goes so we're basically modern day hunters and gatherers they're living in a society that is so much not for us.